Please enjoy the lovely sounds of Tyler telling a story and urinating. So I couldn't find, I couldn't, I'm not going to tear off my vinyl siding to go look for a hole in the other siding in the nine degree weather. I'm going to wait till next year to do it. So of course I went on the inside of my house and cut open several plastic trash bags and taped them over sections of my walls so the air can't get through. <laughs> and now back to our regularly scheduled program. Tyler. Um, Recently discovered to be angelic, Tyler, it would seem. Um, uh, yes. <clears throat> so, I am a castrati. Mm-hmm. Since you have elevated yourself, um, uh, I, I am very curious to know, what are you drinking? Well, this is... Uh... Uh, going to be an interesting statement because this makes everything that I've started drinking taste quite terrible. Um, I'm having a little bit of Woodford's Reserve Small Batch Cask Strength Papa Joe Liquors Casket, blah, 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 blah. I, I'll, I'll say it better. My local liquor store that I get all of my whiskey from um, frequently does caskets from different um I mean, just different companies, and they have three or four of these on, on, on available at all times. And yesterday, they had a brand new one from Woodford's, and I was like, yeah, that, I'll have that. So this is a 57.1% um, yeah, this is their own special reserve casket. They made them keep it set for a certain amount of time. Um, you can kind of tell that it's been it's it's aged a lot longer i think the exact age they put on here is 15 year um you know you got that cask strength coloration you know where it looks a little bit lighter than it, it normally tends to i don't know it's just the most amazing thing in the entire world i've had it before it's my number one of all time and yeah it just tastes like that kind of slightly sweeter um high firepower bourbon and the reason why it tastes like crap right now is because i'm very very tired and i've been scrambling all morning and i had a <clears throat> giant chug of a monster without mm. drinking any water then went right into bourbon and if you were wor- curious about what that tasted like the answer is bad sounds like a fantastic time yeah so essentially i just am ruining a glass of 120 dollar bottle of bourbon Well, and it makes me feel bad. I am drinking something somewhat that would normally be equally as pleasant. Um, uh, but right now, based on your what you've said, um, uh, seems like what I'm drinking is more pleasant. Um, yes. I am actually drinking War Poet Coffee. <clears throat> Ooh. I really, really want to try that. Um, I've been intrigued by just the company in general. Um, and so therefore, I just would like to try. But I, I, I just haven't bought it. You have to order that offline, don't you? Say so what? You have to order that okay. offline, don't you? Yes. Yes, you do. Yeah, I haven't <clears throat> I haven't done it yet, and I, I should. Yeah. Well, see, I am... Um, uh... I did the math, and, like, I was looking at this, like, this coffee is so expensive. And then I did the math, and I'm like, you know, I usually run by um, uh, the gas station on the way to work and pick up a coffee from there. And I did the math, and even me thinking this coffee is so expensive, it's still cheaper than gas station coffee. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, that's what some people, I think, um, I don't think a lot of people take into consideration how much money you're always going to save mm-hmm. by making your own cup of coffee even if it's very very expensive coffee yeah now i think if if i was you know getting say a cat poop coffee i think i would be saving yeah. any money there but <clears throat> which you know 
I've always part of me doesn't know if I want to try that or not. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would. Have, I I don't think I'd go to a like if I went to a coffee shop and they said, "Hey, we have cat poop coffee. You want some?" It's like, no, I'll take the the other. But uh, if someone said, "Hey," Would you like me to? Would you like to try some cat poop coffee? I said, yeah, sure, I'll try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm intrigued, mm-hmm. but not enough to like pay money for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. <laughs> yep, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. But yeah, so yeah, I want to try. It. I want to try it. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued. Not the cat poop, the warrior poet. Mm-hmm. I mean, cat poop too, but less. Yeah, yeah. Which is absolutely. a great out of context quote for me for the day. I want to try it. Warrior poet, not the cat poop. Uh, well, what you should do is come up here and we'll have some. That's a great idea. I'm going to get in the car and I'll see you sometime around 5 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, about, about then. That's about right. That was a dead guess, but I actually think that might be right. Yeah, well, let's see. Depends on, depends on the kind of gas mileage you get. Um, uh, it's the way I drive. It's about nine hours of driving. Um, uh, I don't. Nine I, I don't. Drive. I don't expect you drive much slower than me. Um, uh, with... Ellie would be driving, so I'd get there in about an hour quicker than you would. Okay. Um, uh, and then uh, if you have a vehicle that can pull it off, that can pull off a one a one gas like one gas stop. Um. Uh, You'll need to you'll you'll need to be able to make it at least around four hundred miles on a tank to be able to make it in one stop. But um, um I'm right on the verge of that with my car. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd be close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so but if you make it in two stops, I'll, I always allow fifteen minutes per stop. Um, uh, and so uh, so take out thirty minutes out of that. So the trip usually takes uh it'll take us we have to make more than i think we have to make two stops sometimes three because of baby stuff but um uh, yeah. and so you may wind up, you may wind up with the same thing but so if you make three stops that's say an hour of stops you make it in 10 and a half hours which 10 hours from now is five o'clock or a quarter after oh, yeah so now that everyone knows exactly the way that we would get to your house, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we might as well stop. All people know we is how well long stop. it takes. <laughs> hey guys, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what I'm get, what I'm getting at is that that's just that's just enough talking. We can uh, we can call this. That's, oh. That was the whole reason why we had this today. Yeah, yeah. We just want you guys to know that we live about ten hours apart. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh. But in all seriousness, we are kind of going. Very different direction today, but kind of, I do think it's kind of an important one, given that we do kind of end up on topics randomly that sometimes have us kind of come out and say, you know, like, oh, well, this is, well, we'll say something like, well, like, well, this is wrong, and then we'll just kind of go a little bit around vaguely why we think it's wrong, but not into a lot of detail we've like we've we've given our opinion on issues and given a few facts of why we think that but never dove into any intense detail Mm -hmm. and so we thought maybe we'll address a little bit of our entire philosophical mindset if you will our approach our mantra not really but still like a little bit of background Maybe yeah. it would be helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, my um, uh, uh, I think I'm gonna have I I I'm gonna have if if we don't wind up talking too much just based on these one things I'm gonna have some other questions. But my first question for you, Tyler. Oh, beautiful. Is why do you do what you do? Okay. Um. I think. I started thinking about how I wanted to answer these questions Mm -hmm. Um, as soon as you, you, because you came to me saying, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. This, this was your idea and, and I liked it, but it was, it was your idea. Mm -hmm. And 
I've been kind of debating. I think we've made pretty clear already our um, our religious stance, even to to a even to an aggressive degree at some points. I mean, we've actually ended up going into um, a decent bit of detail and the times that we've brought up Lewis and had to talk about a little bit of theology, we've actually got, dug pretty deep a couple of times. So I think I've kind of, I think it's, it's, it's clearly out there um, for anyone who's listened to our other episodes. So I'm kind of wanting to not give too many of those, you know, answers that make a lot of people roll their eyes. Just suffice it to say that I'm a, I'm a, um, identify as the concept of a Christian trying to be Christ-like individual, but I'm going to give all of my answers based on like uh, strictly non-spiritual answers Mm -hmm. for this, unless it's extremely specific. Mm -hmm. So while I'm not going to be mentioning very many spiritual theological things and things that I'm answering, that's just because it's the all-encompassing background and we're just going to lay that as the foundation before I say anything else. Gotcha. Okay. That's worth, that was long, but that was worth prefacing for, so when I start giving all these answers, it can just go from that understanding, as it were. Um, why do I do what I do? Mm-hmm. The, every day that I wake up and go through the particular things that I have to do, for that day is because I view my position in life and my role in life as the caretaker and head of a household figure. Um, I go to work and strive to do better and have spent the last, um, specifically the past six or seven years really, but the, the, the last decade for sure, constantly trying to find ways to improve my family's quality of life by finding ways to work harder, do more, and be able to be a better provider. That is the core essence of why I wake up in the morning and do what I do. I do actually have that particular viewpoint um, in my own head that I would be doing a much easier job that I didn't dislike sometimes if it wasn't for the fact that I have a very strong drive to make sure I am giving my family the best life possible. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's a way to be longer winded about that and we're not going to do it. Yep. So that, that is why you do what you do. And I'm going to answer the same kind of question. My answer is not going to be much different than yours. Uh, just a few slightly different things. Um, uh, the, how we do, you know, and, and it's it's going to be about, about the same thing, and that 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 is this: I am, I am a man that gives me, and I'm going to wax because because it, it plays so much into my philosophy. I'm going to, and I, it, it does it does for you too. I'm not saying it doesn't for you, but I'm saying I have a hard t- I will have a hard time describing my philosophy without at least mildly touching on the spiritual just because I since I I I am not very I'm a simple person and so I I'll, I'll, I I like to give simple answers even though they'll sound complicated because I talk so much but I'm uh the like the I have the as a man, I have the God-given both responsibility and privilege. Um, uh, responsibility, yeah, because it, it does it, it does weigh on me. I have to take it into consideration. Privilege, because you know, I I love doing what I do. I I, I love who I who I am who I am required to be and who I get to be is the same. Um, uh, but I have the the God given responsibility and privilege to be provider and protector for my family, like you said. Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to use I'm I'm, I'm going to use scripture in that, uh, and I forget the exact quote, but um, uh, that whoever will not 
provide for his own, especially those of his own house, which in my case, in my house, is just my wife and one child. And now this part is a, is a direct quote. Hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Mm-hmm. And that is not something that I want to be said of me, even if I didn't, you know, love my wife and child more than I love my own life. Even if even if that wasn't the case, that is uh, th- th- those are strong words that I can't go against. Um, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> and For sure. yeah, but then I also have to think about uh, there's there's a certain thing that that I do is a certain balance, and that is I believe that any man who like uh, and obviously like you know if you're at a job and they require you to work so much that's that's a little bit different but like say you have you know like a voluntary overtime kind of deal any man or any not any, man, any father because you can be a man without being a father or a husband any father in my in my the, the, in the, this 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 is my philosophy on labor um uh, any father who Knowing that it takes 12 hours a day to provide for his family and chooses to work 8 hours or 10 hours, knowing that 12 hours is what's necessary, is a useless father because he's not willing to do what it takes to provide for his family. But Mm. also, one thing that it is my responsibility as a father to provide for my son, I not only am I supposed to provide for him his necessaries, but I'm also supposed to provide him of myself. And so if I knew that I could provide for my family on eight hours a day and I choose to and I choose not I'm forced to, but I choose to work more than 10 hours a day, knowing that I can provide for him with eight, I am for all those extra hours depriving my son of myself. So it's my responsibility to provide for him of his needs and of myself. I have to give him a life and I have to give him a dad. So I am, it's not as bad to, to give him less of myself knowing that his needs are taken care of than it is to uh, not take care of his needs. Uh, because I also would, I would also contend that if I know 12 hours are necessary to provide for my family and I choose not to work those 12 hours, I'm probably also not providing of myself to my family. Um, uh, who knows what I'm doing with that extra time, but it's no, almost certainly not good fatherly things. <clears throat> um, uh, <clears throat> and so, um, uh, and so for for that for that reason, like for me, there has there has to be a, I, I guess you'd call it a work life balance. But for me, yeah. it's it's yeah. N- but I don't view it as a work life balance because with a work life balance, they're like, man, yeah, I see how you're working, but man, you got to have that work life balance. You got to live. I'm not thinking of it that way. I'm thinking of it as I have a responsibility to my son. Half of that responsibility is providing him with what he needs. Half of that responsibility is providing him with me. And so if I don't, like, if, if I don't give him as much of both as I possibly can, <clears throat> then, then that's, and that, that's, and that's, it- hmm? Can't wait, it, don't if you're in the middle of the thought, finish the thought. But I, I had something to play off of there. But finish your, but definitely finish your thought. No, the and that's that I said was, and that's why I do what I do. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So, so this is this is um, I'm gonna play off of what you said with with some of what I was what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So this is this is why it's so interesting uh, of it being a philosophical take because obviously we're saying very similar things. Mm-hmm. But what's really <laughs> And I think this is probably something that's not worth diving into. Um, Mm -hmm. But you and I have very different um, jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to to think, or not to think, but it's interesting to see uh, if someone were to look at us from the top down, how different, (laughs) um, you know, how different our approach to getting to the exact same answer would have to be given what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, and I again, I don't want to dive into that because, oh my goodness, what's the point of talking about what we do for a living? Mm-hmm. But like you said, that work-life balance. So there's, you also made the comment about saying something like voluntary overtime or or this thing or that thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that is something that I find very interesting for people that I see that are kind of workaholics. Mm-hmm. So. 
um, I completely agree with what you said about saying if if this person knows they need this much mm-hmm. to survive, um, and they're doing less, and you have a bad opinion of them. It, it, for me, I also have a bad opinion of workaholics. Mm-hmm. I think I have the exact same mm-hmm. opinion. Um, if anything, I actually think I hate workaholics more. Mm-hmm. And also, um, let, let me let, let yeah, me throw because, something in here too. Well, real quick, real quick, just to finish the yeah. sentence. Uh-huh. I think it's because they are using their drive for the less important thing, and I find that to be somehow worse because it's almost like they have a better quality. And they're using it in the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that's that. That's fair. Um, uh, <clears throat> but um, uh, uh, well, yeah. What, what, I, what I was gonna say was, we, I, I, I wanted to add that when I say, you know, if you know you can get by, or you, you know, you can provide for your family working eight hours, and you choose to work more than ten, and that's a problem. I'm gonna change that to if you choose to consistently work more than ten. If you're like, hey, you know what? It's October. I think for the month of October, I'm gonna just put in. I'm gonna put in fourteen hours a day for the month of October, and then I'm gonna give my kid the best Christmas he's ever had. That's not consistently. Mm-hmm. That's for this one time thing. Or you're like, you know what? Next year, you know, my kid is like, you know, I've I've you know I've been watching my kid grow up. He's five or six years old. Next year, I'm just gonna absolutely kill it at work. And then if I do this, like if I put in if I put in twelve hours a day every single day that I work at work, then I can put back this much, and I'll be able to pay off the house and it'll let me retire. And then look at all this time I'll have with my kid. You know, and mm-hmm. and, and th- that that sort of stuff. I am um, uh, uh, th- for 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 those reasons. Now, if you're you know, like, hey, this will let me retire ten years early. Well, you know, your kid's already forty. What that what good is that going to do? You know, how how who, how does that help anybody? But um, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> but like you know, if if you can set it up so that you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to retire by the time my kid is eight years old, and then I can spend his the whole rest of his childhood and do that and that, I kind of see that. Now, if you're like, if you're trying to retire by the time he's eight years old, so you put in all the extra time from one to eight, then you're still wrong. But you know, you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if, if you have, you know, short term on the, on the short term, then I, I, I think it's okay because that's still part of that, that, you know, you're, you're, you're not making the intention or you're not trying to, you know, deprive your, for most of the time that people do that, they're doing it to give themselves, to better give themselves to their, their child at, at other times. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with either way in that case. Mm-hmm. I think that was an important clarification, but I do think we could move on to another question. Cause I feel like you and I, there's nothing wrong with this, but I mm-hmm. feel like you and I could probably just dive deeper and deeper and deeper into this one thing. And I don't know how, mm-hmm. I don't know how productive this is to the conversation because you have the questions. Yes, I well, I, I don't. I just, I just don't know how productive it's going to be. Uh, so I, I started today with only one question, and that was why do you do what you do? And then mm-hmm. a, another question popped into my mind while I was asking that one. So this is actually the second question I thought of since we've been recording. Beautiful, um, and it's something that I, I can't say I've put lots and lots of thought into, but I've thought about before, and that is this. Um. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what at any time at in, absolutely any time what things ideas and people would you be willing to die for at any time no matter what and then after Ooh. that and th- then beyond that what things ideas and people would you be willing to die for conditionally 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 <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. um, I think it goes without saying too much um, mm. that mm. Like, wife and children um, mm. and everyone always like says the thing like I like to think that I no it's not a, I like to think I would mm-hmm. I promise you I would mm-hmm. um, without th- there's no condition on that if they look at me in the eye and say it's you or it's one of these four people like I, I have three kids and my wife they have four people mm-hmm it's it's you or any of these four people doesn't matter which of the four the decisions already made for me in my head this is where i am period i mean i i and it, there's all there would almost be some sort of um happiness in mm-hmm. that decision for me 
uh, because, like you mentioned earlier, I don't think I said the word protector specifically like you did, mm -hmm. but that would be the ultimate way to be the actual embodiment of the protector for mm -hmm. um, those people. And so in some hand, you're like, hey, you actually get to ultimately do it. That was the number one. Um, so I think that is a layup uh, for those four. And I'll be perfectly honest. I, I would have to say... I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick to answering the <laughs> unconditionally than conditionally for each part of the thing you're asking to keep it concise. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think any person outside of that would have to be highly conditionally, um, because if you would say I would die for this person that isn't a member of your family, mm -hmm. I feel like you are in that's in this hypothetical situation. You would be abandoning your duties to your family if you were dying for someone outside of your family. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would have to be heavily conditionally anyone outside of my family. Mm -hmm. When you say an actual person, uh, a physical being, I would have to say <clears throat> heavily conditional anyone outside of those four people, those four people unconditionally. Um, what was the other parts to your question? Things, you things ideas, th or people. Things, ideas, and people. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So things, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I'm going to have an answer for things because mm -hmm. I would say ideas, <clears throat> um, ideas would have to be more along the lines of things that people have across the ages found themselves willing to die for. Cause like, mm -hmm. if you say things, I immediately think of a physical object. Uh, so most likely nothing mm -hmm. the way I'm, the way it's formulating in my head. Right. Yeah. Um, so like for instance there's a fine line between becoming a martyr for Christianity as an idea mm -hmm. and saying I'm dying for this actual physical bible see what I mean that's where I'm kind of, how I'm kind of approaching this yeah <clears throat> someone's like I either stab you or I set this bible on fire well okay um, I think I know what my answer is <laughs> like I'm good I've got an answer for you um so I'm going to approach this mm -hmm. specifically from ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of core, <laughs> excuse me, approaching this simplistically. I don't have any real core uh, or many core ideas that I would consider that have worth dying for. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only things that are strong enough in my mind that, that unconditionally you would die for you have to think about the concept of martyrdom for your faith. Mm -hmm. um, you do have people that across the ages have actually had to do that, and that's one of those things that I was like, I really would like to think that that would be something that I would be willing to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. um, those extreme sort of situations where, as has happened many times throughout history, someone has been given an <clears throat> option to to cut it down into a, a, a short statement, um, denounce Christ or die. Mm-hmm. Um, so that right there, that's one of those things you're like, yeah, I really like to think I'd be that guy for sure. Um, I feel like conditionally the idea of, of I'm, I, I'm patriotic. I'm a patriot. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like dying for your country for me at this point in my life, I would say it's conditional because I feel like my duty to my family is above my duty to my country. Mm -hmm. If I did not have a family, I would say then it would be unconditionally. So the condition is my family. So in some terrible scenario in which I'm left without a family and then some war broke out, I feel like that would then be unconditional and I would immediately make that decision, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and you've already, since you've thought of this question, you've already had some answers of your own in your head, so you go ahead and answer and I'll probably go, oh yeah, I wanted to say that, but I didn't start thinking about it until you just said it. Yeah. So unconditionally, absolutely unconditionally, no matter what, um, uh, it's just like, you know, and, and in, in my opinion, the absolute unconditional death is for, for people, it's you choose, I kill you or I kill them. 
um, uh, the conditional death is something that maybe I can, you know, through my, de- I, I can maneuver through and through, I'm going to, I'm putting my life on the line to try to, to prevent this person from dying and I may die in the process. During those times is the conditional death. For me, the unconditional death is a guy comes out, a guy comes up and he says, my gun has one bullet. Do I shoot you or do I shoot X? And the times when I would say, shoot me are really what was that I had a blowing nose sorry uh, on. Uh, the times when I would say shoot me over X person honestly just my wife and kid yeah mm. absolutely on there like you know if because if, if someone came and they had you <laughs> uh, they, they had you there they said hey I will like shoot shoot um, uh, uh, I, I will either shoot you or I'll shoot your brother. Now I You'd will like, s- give me the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now the thing is, a, a year ago, and and th- this this is this is something something interesting here because this is where the spiritual aspect of of the of the philosophy comes in at. A year ago, I would have picked me to be shot. Mm, I see where you're going with this. Uh huh. <clears throat> Okay, I see where you're going with this. Uh-huh. I don't. I th- I think I I don't think I thought about enough people or about enough situations. Um, mm-hmm. Let me rephrase slightly now that mm-hmm. you that you said your thing. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it's still conditional even on that because I, you mm-hmm. have to wonder. Oh 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 yeah. Think... yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter what, if it's a complete stranger, I'm picking. I'm not. I'm I'm picking me to survive because I have because oh, yeah. I have that duty um, to my family. Right, I think that's where I'm coming from. I think, mm-hmm. I think, my life would mm-hmm. have a lot more grief in it after mm-hmm. I would have to make a decision like that. But I think I'd ultimately have to pick my duty to family over my duty to this individual. Mm-hmm. Mm, but that would be, but that'd be one of those mm-hmm. decisions that you'd kind of like have eat you for the rest of your life. But, um, mm-hmm. but I think that I would still have to pick. I'm. I think I still have to pick family. This is a deep mm-hmm. hypothetical now. Yeah, and see, <clears throat> because because here here's here's what I'm looking at on this. Uh, today, if they said I'm going to um uh, uh uh they said hey I'm going to shoot you or I'm going to shoot your brother, I'm going to say sorry shoot him, and then <laughs> a- and then after that, I'm going to I'm I'm going to contact Ellie and I'm going to say hey Ellie. <laughs> Tyler's not alive. Uh, you, you know, uh, come here. And don't you... worry about why. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry about it. He's he's not alive. That's all we care about. Um, uh, That's all that matters. <laughs> just, uh, um, uh, you and the girls come stay with me and Brooke, and I'll, you know, I, I, I'll, you know, I, I have some responsibility to Tyler, and that responsibility extends to you. So you come, and I'll take care of you until something is able to be worked out and if that is for the rest of time so be it um uh, and so uh, and and I I would you probably wouldn't be forced into that position because we're here with Brooks fabulously wealthy parents but um uh, uh but I would know that in the in the previous situation I would I would be okay with saying like you know um, uh, when I said a year ago, I would have chose me to be shot. I know that if it came down to it, you'd do the same for my family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, so and that's I the thing. that's another that this is a <clears throat> deeper biblical thing. That's that's a thing that you should be mm-hmm. um, uh, that you should have anyways. But for us, it's biblical. There is mm-hmm. that obligation that's actually biblical to take care of. I mean, that's even like your brother's widow. I mean, in this case, that's like a quick, mm-hmm. um, a quick all encompassing thing of the reason why that is an important thing to the two of us, not just because you shouldn't be a jerk, um, mm-hmm. but also because that's actually pretty biblical, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. Yeah, also, well, there's one thing that's in the... I'm glad it's in the Old Testament, because if it was in the New Testament, I'd be obligated to, to, <laughs> to do this. Um, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have a son, so if you died, technically speaking, I would owe it to you to, to give your wife a son. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not all in for this one, guys. Sorry. She, she's a fine-looking girl, but uh, <laughs> 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 um, uh, <clears throat> but um, uh, 
And so that that's that's my un, uh, so unconditionally that's it wife and son conditionally oh and also unconditionally for people unconditionally for um uh, uh no things that are unconditional uh ideas um uh yeah and then every, I, I'm gonna say this I say things but then everything that I would die for um uh winds up there be it an idea behind it or a person behind it. So I think it's actually yeah. for the person, not the thing. But I'm still going to include the things <laughs> and the things. But conditionally, conditionally, people, almost anyone. And that is, that is to say, a guy sitting here, and um, uh, he goes up, and he is, you know, threatening someone with great bodily harm. And I have reason to believe it's not like, you know, hey, like uh, yeah, if, if someone walks up, if a dude walks up to another dude and says, you raped my daughter and I'm going to stab you in the throat, I'm not going to intervene in that. Yeah, yeah he <laughs> can die. I'm not even going to report it, you know, <laughs> but. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. He looks like he tripped on something. That's rough. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, must have been a mugging, you know. <laughs> like, oof. Are there Someone any fingers? Are there like? Well, did did you see anything? No, and there aren't any fingerprints, and I definitely didn't help the guy wipe them off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but then like you know, so, someone walks up to another person and says, "Hey, give me your money. I have a knife," or you know, what whatever it may be. You know, I'm like you know, a, a bad guy threatening uh, an innocent person. Chances are, unless I have my family with me. And they could find themselves in harm's way. Other than that time, like yeah, I'm gonna put myself in harm's way to help that person, to prevent that from happening, and knowing that this person is threatening deadly force. As soon as I intervene, there's always the possibility of that force being used against me. Therefore, in the that in that conditional context, I'm not expecting to die, but I'm prepared to. And mm -hmm. I would, and I wouldn't put myself in that position if I wasn't willing to. So in those contexts, I'd be willing to die for a complete stranger. But it's, n but I'm not. the The unconditional is you go in knowing you're going to die. I go in not expecting to die. I go in with this thinking, this person is a, is, is like this person is a a criminal. Criminals are notoriously bad shots. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, good. You watch Star Wars, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, and, and 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 I'm pretty good, so I have this advantage, you know. <clears throat> um, uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, so that's, and then uh, ideas. Oh, 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 I forgot to say this. Oh, um, uh, uh, unconditional ideas. I'm gonna die die for my faith. Uh, I I will die for God absolutely unconditionally. I'm not gonna go looking for a reason. You know, and if there are people saying, "Hey, these people are going around rounding up Christians and killing them," I'm gonna leave. <laughs> you know, I'm <laughs> uh, I'm not just gonna say, "Well, I'm staying right here and wait for them to come kill me." You know, I'm not retarded. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just go. Just yeah, leave. But w but when when the time comes, and I'm I'm not gonna say I like to think I would do this. I'm not. No, I'm I'm. When the time comes, is you know, in in the in the classic, um, uh, you know. Uh, you know, flyleaf Cassie, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, set up, um, uh, in, in that, no, I know for an absolute fact what my answer would be because I know I'm willing to die for my God. Um, uh, the, and then, uh, conditional ideas. Uh, I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting die for my country. Um, uh, again on the conditional, um, uh, I I have I would have a man I would have a hard time dying for this I wouldn't I don't think I would join the military right now I I, I know I would even if I was young enough to you have to be uh, 27 I think I'm um, uh, I'm too old uh, I'm not 27 <clears throat> anymore so old um, uh, yeah but um uh, I even even if I was was of age I would not join this country right now because I'm not that willing to die for my country at this point. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I am willing to die protect. And here's the conditional part: I'm willing to die protecting this country from itself, and uh, and, and uh, from any anyone who would inv any outsider who would invade. I'm willing to protect the country from, and I'm willing to die to protect the country from any insider who would see it destroyed. 
Um, uh, as of right now, there are no opportunities to die protecting it from the inside and no opportunities to die protecting it from the outside. Um, uh, I would, um, uh, I, I, I would, but I, I would, f- uh, allow either opportunity. I, I, in, in, when I had not that opportunity, you know, when I had those, you know, those situations came up in either case, I would do it. Um, uh, also I have to say this, speaking of protecting the, the, the country from the inside, I've said this before and I'm going to, I'm going to say it again. Uh, I've never said it on here though. I've just said it before in other contexts. Um, uh, and that is, I am, um, uh, I know that, uh, like, you know, there, there are some people who say, uh, civilians, the armed civilian does not stand a chance against the government, so there's no reason to try. I've heard people say that, and I've heard the government say that. Um, uh, and here is proof that that is not true. <laughs> they say, you think, you know, with the, 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 the small arms you have access to, you could... Um, uh, you know, well, not you know, you individually, but you know, the civilian could stand a chance against the the government coming in. Well, here is proof positive that that can happen, and that is this: the government is afraid of the armed civilian. If the armed civilian stood no chance, the government would have no reason to be afraid of the armed civilian. And the reason why we know the government is afraid of the arm is afraid of the armed civilian is because they keep trying to convince us that they're not afraid of the armed civilian, while at the same time trying so hard to disarm the civilians. <laughs> but anyways, that's 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 beside the point. Um, uh, <clears throat> no, that, that was. We're turning it. Are we turning into a Q and on podcast right now? Yeah, absolutely. But <clears throat> but I mean, you know what I'm saying though on that, like you know that that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that if if it was if they weren't afraid of you having it, they wouldn't try to take it from you. <laughs> well, for the record, I mean, mm-hmm. at the at the risk of now being the one uh, making the Q and on statement, we are you know mm-hmm. not that far from a 300 year anniversary of doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. For the record, yeah, only about fifty-four years off. Um, uh, fifty-four years. <laughs> but they, um, uh, yeah. And then for things conditionally, like you know, you said, would you die for this particular Bible? Um, uh, well, and then as soon I had never given that thought, and then as soon as you said that, I came up with the context in which I would. Check this out. There's a man through here. You live in an area. You know, no other people. Uh, you, know, you have your little community, and there's no other people for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, uh, and, like, you know, it's, it's whatever. Or say, like, you know, what like, a huge swath of area, and then your community is in there, and your community has one Bible that the entire community must share. Then someone comes in and says, hey, I'm going to burn this Bible. And this is still going, like, and this is going back to going for the idea of it. I am going to, um, uh, uh, I am, am going to, you know, put myself in to stop that man from burning that Bible, and I would be willing to, like, in stopping that man, uh, I would understand the risk of me possibly dying, uh, preventing that man from burning that Bible, but it's not because I want to protect the Bible, it's for, so the, so that, that would deprive the entire community access from you know, to the Bible, if that was, you know, if if that one Bible was burned, and that's that's a and to to allow that to be the case, or to allow that to happen, I would be willing to potentially die in that context. Um, uh, and then uh, and other conditional things, I would die in protection of this building that is my home, but it's more the family that's inside it. Uh, if it came down to an apocalyptic uh, situation, I would die in protection of food that I had. But that's because my family needs that food. So, <clears throat> um, uh, so like, all technically, technically conditional. I mean, like, yeah, yeah all conditional. You're talking about yeah. coming to take all your stuff. <clears throat> yeah, if you came in right now and said, "Hey, give," uh, you have those. You, you you put a gun to my face right now, and said, "Hey, you have. I see you have those nice bags of fish in the freezer." How about you just give them to me? I was like, okay, take them. Here, <laughs> take, take the fish and leave. Get that gun out of my face. <laughs> like, like, good lord, man. Yeah. Like, you want the fish that badly? <laughs> you know, you, you could have just asked. I'd have given you some fish. <laughs> this is expired, my man. <laughs> uh, but yeah. 
I think uh, we're. I think this is officially a deep dive too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about that for about fifteen minutes. We have about fifteen minutes left. I think we can talk about this for a little bit less time because there will be some overlap on this in the last list. But here you go, both conditionally and unconditionally, things, ideas, and people, not that you would die for, but you would kill for. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I think this is easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the list of people I would kill for would have to be situational because uh, mm -hmm. most of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of them. <clears throat> most likely a large <throat> swath of the population. Um, yeah. Um, situationally, everybody. Um, unconditionally, quite a lot mm -hmm. um i think it stands to okay so like if if it, it cause this, this is an odd question because if you dial it down to the way we've been talking about these other ones of saying something like either you shoot me or i'm going to shoot this other person the list of people that i would <clears throat> be fine with this person killing is not that long mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean most of them yeah <clears throat> Yeah, that so, was, I mean, yeah, that, that, that's that was a, a very simple question. answer. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, for, <laughs> so for me though, like you know, let's let's go into a, a a deeper, a little bit of a deeper context. Obviously, if it's like you know, the X person is threatening X person's life, um, uh, you know, for for whom would you, for whom would you kill? And that that is yeah, the vast majority of people. But then. You know, going into a, a, a little bit different, like this person is, um, uh, you know, trying to force a person to go somewhere against their will. Who would you kill for in that case? Hold on, say that again, because I think I caught it, but I want to make sure. Someone is trying to force another person to go somewhere against their will. Who would you kill for in that case? Uh, it depends on the place. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's like to go take a shower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, probably wouldn't kill anybody. Mm -hmm. um, Re remove like remove them to a secondary location. If the secondary location is the concept of kidnapping, <clears throat> then man, still quite a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is still pretty conditional. I mean, like if. If some random guy grabbed my kid and go, I'm taking you to Walmart, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it's just Walmart. But I mean, I don't want them <laughs> taking them there. <laughs> Screw you, I'm going to Walmart. <laughs> like, we're still going to Walmart, but it's the principle. <laughs> mm. um, <clears throat> hmm. I don't know. I feel like that question is too tricky. I, mm. If it's a situation where you, where you feel like you have to protect another individual mm. because this is, things are about to go bad for them, I, I would like to think that the vast majority of the population, I would want to be protecting them in that scenario because you're like, hey, that's not cool. We have to not let people not be cool. That's <clears> part <throat> of our job as people is to not be bad people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so most of them. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, it just depends. If it's like someone's like, I'm about to kidnap this this kid and I'm going to do it right in front of you. Mm -hmm. I, and it's like, and I I would only stop if you killed me. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a not only is it justifiable but i mean it's probably the right thing to do mm -hmm. yeah see that that's that that's, that's the um uh uh that, that's the thing like there there was a uh a video that i saw um uh, there were two men in this video and i don't know which was more despicable which of the two men was more despicable there was the uh the first man who was pumping gas at his truck and the second man who was inside the gas station uh the man who's inside the gas station had a woman in his car while the man was in there, the woman decided now was the time to make her escape. The man was taking her somewhere against her will. And she decided now was the time for her to escape. So she got out of the car and ran over to the man who was pumping gas and started begging him for help. Um, uh, and I, um, uh, uh, yes, yeah, started begging him for help. And then the man who was in the store saw that, ran out of the store, got her, dragged her out from underneath the man's truck, and carried her kicking and screaming back to his car, and the man who was pumping gas literally just stood there pumping gas and didn't move the entire time. And I don't believe I don't know I don't know which man is more despicable. 
That's some pretty beta energy. <laughs> yeah, but I am um, uh, like here's here's the thing, like in that context, a girl comes up to me, starts begging me for help, and then the guy comes up and starts trying to take the girl. My immediate response is not just immediately draw and shoot. <clears throat> it's you know I, I the my my response. So I wouldn't just immediately, you know, kill that guy for trying to take that girl somewhere against her will. But I would, like, you know, use myself as a physical barrier in between the two. Say, hey, you know, what, what, what the crap is going on here? You know, both parties explain yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is, this is back to the, the, the situational as the place. If you're talking about protecting someone, uh-huh. sure. If you're talking about, um, like, you see a parent dragging their kid and their kid is kicking and screaming. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, like, I, I have children. I can just assume that the parent is probably taking them somewhere that they have to go. And the kid is just being a kid. My yeah. first thought isn't that the kid's being kidnapped. And the kid's like, Mom, I don't want to go. And the mom's like, shut up. I'm probably not even going to look at them for very long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then again, I, I, I would be curious about the person dragging the kid, kicking and screaming, and the kid saying, let me go, you're not my mom. <laughs> well, that's different. Yeah. Like, that's why I specifically <clears throat> said mom, you know, because, like, yeah. If it's in, like, I don't know who... uh who this woman is she's trying to take me away I'm like oh yeah. well maybe we should call somebody let's do a yeah. thing here I'm like oh wait a minute yeah and, and this and, is not right yeah and then and then when you accost the people and say hey why is this kid saying you're not his his mother and i'm uh <laughs> it, it, it just depends on the answer that i get from the from, from the person on whether i step in if i said why is this kid saying you're not his mother like, he's retarded like okay you're the mom <laughs> but if, <laughs> if, if, because uh, that's none of your business. I'm gonna say, hey, I believe it's, it's gonna be a. Shh, I think you're, you know, there's a problem here. Uh, you sit down until you know you're 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 not going in any place until we get this sorted, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I think um, we're just turning into an episode of what would you do? Yeah, yeah, I get that's, that's how it happens. But the um, well, that's kind of what this is though. But um. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but then someone trying to take people though, even with my wife and child, the answer is different. Because here's why: if a police officer comes up to my wife and says you are under arrest, puts her in handcuffs, and drives off with her, and I know this man to be a policeman, I'm you know I would very much expect it to be an unlawful arrest, and I would just allow it to happen and then a lot of states allow you to file suit for unlawful arrest and then we and then I'd get it sorted that way but yeah um uh and that, that that's going to happen but then and that that's how how it's going to be and so there are contexts in which you know I would allow someone to take my wife from me but then again we're talking about my kid I don't care if you're a random stranger if you are a physician if you're a social worker, if you're a policeman, or even a family member, if you try to take my kid from me, I guarantee I'll smoke you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that's, you know, uh, that's that. So, you know, we, we went, you know, I was looking at the time. Uh, we've been going on for a little less than an hour, and I'm... Uh, you know, there, there, there's deeper that we could go. I'm a little afraid to go deeper, just because who knows where that rabbit hole will end up at. I'm surprised yeah, at how I know. I'm surprised at how shallow we stayed and still talked for an hour. <clears throat> yeah, because technically speaking, this was all philosophy, mm-hmm. and this was the philosophical talk episode. So <clears throat> mm-hmm. not bad. Yeah, that's some, um, uh, uh, man. We, we, if we're going to go into any sort of deep dive, we would have to have, like, episode-specific, hey, look, we're going to look into the philosophy of this today. And that would be that would, that would turn into three episodes, yeah. if we ever did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think these past <clears throat> these past two weeks, well, not this, this week, I guess, is kind of a big, um, excuse me, a big jump from what, um, you know, what we kind of set out to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we started doing this stuff, mm-hmm. but I do feel um, so. You actually, so mm-hmm. interestingly enough, um, mm-hmm. normally we have our topics pretty far in advance, um, 
this week, Sean actually messaged me last night and didn't tell me what he wanted to talk about. And actually didn't tell me what he wanted to talk about until this morning. And I was like, ah, well, that's actually a really good idea mm -hmm. because we do end up kind of, um, um, we do end up kind of interjecting our ideas, which is the, you know, the core of our philosophy or all of our ideals that we hold on to. And we kind of brush over them and just kind of give an answer. And I feel like it is kind of important to have a little bit of a mindset. Some of it, um, maybe some of these questions aren't going to help anyone think anything, but they're still worth talking about and they're still worth like establishing yourself as a person. I mean, if you're going to sit here and listen to a person talk, I do think it's kind of important to know if you can fundamentally agree or disagree with them. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And so now I am, uh, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to end my section of it with the absolute bare bones of my worldview philosophy. Okay. And it goes like this. My <coughs> social, like, interpersonal interactions, how I deal with other people, um, uh, so that is how I carry myself in the world. Um, uh, uh, my actions, I guess. Um, uh, I take so yeah how how I do everything I take three things into consideration the primary thing that I first consider is what I am about to do how does this line up with my understandings of what the of 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 what I understand the bible requires of me and what my god requires of me uh, as, as a Christian, and also what my God requires of me as an individual, things that I I believe th that are tacked onto, uh, not not uh, obviously I can't believe anything less than what's in there, but uh, many uh, most individuals will have something in a something extra that's that's in addition that you say I also feel that I must do this. Um, uh, so how how does that you know how do, how will this action um uh, how how will this action be compared to that? The next thing that I can, and I don't consciously consider all of these things, obviously, but these are my my subconscious considerations or unconscious considerations. Um, uh, uh, first, I compare the action to that. Then I compare the action to how will this, um, uh, you know, the most I consider is how will this action affect my family? Um, uh, will this be detrimental to my my role as protector and provider? Will this uh, act uh, antithetical to that in any way is antithetical the right word there will this act against that in any way will this will, will, will this prevent me from being a good um, provider and protector and then the last thing that I consider is if it's something where I believe my pride uh, may may be offended in some way uh, and that this is the least important one but um, uh, this is more for things that I do myself it's more of how I look versus how I'm going to act because I'll go out and do stupid stuff that would that should offend my pride but I don't care um, uh, about that so it's more like you know well I guess if I'm being serious I'll do anything in goofiness but if I'm being ser serious about stuff um, uh, my my pride and how I so basically what does God think of me what does so, so what 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 does what does God how does this affect God's opinion how does this affect my my family's opinion, and then lastly, how does this affect my opinion? And that is, um, uh, uh, and the, the, those are the three things that I unconsciously weigh uh, each decision that I make off of in that order. That's that that hmm. that's my that's my entire worldview and philosophy wrapped up into three statements: my God um, first, then my family, then myself. Um, I feel like that's a, a good um, wrap up to kind of what we're both saying, but I do kind of want to address something. And I think people just because of the way the world currently works and the way that people currently view everything all the time skewed in my opinion. Um, but it's worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. We say a lot of things um, yes, that they, you know, quite a lot of things. We say a lot of things that many people here um, take at a quick face value and make judgments of the entire personality and our entire makeup and probably even some of our philosophy based on individual words that we say or jokes that we make. Mm -hmm. um, and that wraps up a lot. And so it's, <clears throat> I think there's something that's worth saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
jokes are just that. They're mm-hmm. just jokes. Words are just that. They're just words. Context mm-hmm. is important. Meaning behind them is important. And they don't have... And, like, just saying a word out loud just for the sake of saying a word or making a joke does not, has never, and will never sum up an individual because the person has said a word or made a joke. It depends on where they came from in their mind when they made it or said it and their intent behind the word or their intent behind the joke. This mm-hmm. is important. <clears throat> the reason why it's worth saying is because my approach to how I would handle any interaction with any person and any human being, uh, because I'm just this is just an addition to addition to what you said because I don't have a different opinion than you. I just want to add a thing to it. And I'm not going to speak for you, but I think you're going to have, I think you're going to largely agree with me. Any individual, period. Mm -hmm. There there are no stipulations for that. Any individual that I come across, the first and foremost duty before anything has been said and before any intentions have been put forward or any barriers have been put up is to love that individual. Mm-hmm. And by love them, I don't mean grab them and kiss them, obviously. Depends I on mean, the individual. <laughs> it depends on the individual. That's, that's <laughs> right down to a... It, you know, it, it, just, it, it just depends. <laughs> um, but is to be loving and caring to them. Um, a lot of people are going to automatically assume that this is not our approach to an individual <clears throat> because of words we've said and jokes we've made. And it's just simply not the case. Mm-hmm. Um, it just isn't. Um, the and I actually have. I'm going to have. You're going to have a different answer from me here, and that's fine. And if you want, to, I don't want to dive into these, but you could you could give your opinion on it if you feel the need to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I have a big my. Um, I feel like I'd rather sum this up with with uh, not sum it up, but like kind of uh, put it in a box by saying. Mm, I have the same approach to dealing with every single human being that um, Jordan Peterson has laid out. Mm-hmm. And I think he's a great mm-hmm. example for this because of the things that we talk about and the things that we say and then how we would treat an individual and why they're different than that. Jordan Peterson became famous, or infamous, probably is a better word here, mm-hmm. <clears throat> for saying, I refused, refuse to be forced to call these people by whatever random pronoun they mm-hmm. have decided they want to be called. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I refuse to be forced by law to say this. Mm-hmm. I will not stand by it, and I will fight against it. <clears throat> During when this <clears throat> happened, he was interviewed, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and this interviewer said to him, oh, so you're trying to tell me that if you're in a social... And by the way, this is actually Ben Shapiro's answer as well. Um, mm-hmm. Just worth throwing out there. <clears throat> if you are in a social situation, and you're one-on-one, and the person says, by the way, would you refer to me as this? Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson both said, in the social situation, sure. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> this is because there is a huge difference between saying I will make you say something and a polite situation in which our job is to be loving to someone Mm -hmm. there's a huge difference that's only worth throwing out there because again we say a lot of things we have a lot of strong opinions on a lot of 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 hot button issues and we aren't we're not very candid about our answers we're pretty open Mm mm-hmm but because of having a strong opinion, <clears throat> a lot of people would say, oh, so you're this, 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 you're this, 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 and you're filled with hatred. No, it's quite the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's quite the opposite. The, that doesn't change my opinion. That doesn't change my stance. <clears throat> and if this particular person who I disagree <clears throat> with a ton <clears throat> is like, why do you do this? I'd love to talk to them. I'd love to give them an answer. And I'd love to do it lovingly, not in this like yelling and screaming and saying, you're, tra- you're trash and you're garbage and this. No. To that person's none of those things. Mm-hmm. But I would still give my opinion to the person I disagree with when my disagreement is with who they think that they happen to be fundamentally. And I'm not specifically saying 
<clears throat> jumping into the same issue as Jordan Peterson, I'm just saying in general, let's just say someone who's extremely democratic and extremely liberal has come to me with a bunch of ideas that I disagree with. I, I mean, I consider myself very much a centrist for the most part, mm -hmm. but I would happily tell them all the reasons why I think they're wrong. But then at the end of that conversation, if they go, you want to get a cup of coffee? Absolutely, I do. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. Let's 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 stay loving at yeah. the end of it. See that list of people that I said I would, if it came down to it, put myself in harm's way, um, uh, to you know, uh, to to you know, either put myself in harm's way where I could potentially die to protect them while I killed the person who was threatening them. <laughs> Every single person that we spent time making fun of and saying that we thought they were bad people, every single one of those people is on the list of people that I would put myself in harm's way to save. Absolutely. Uh, 100%. And going back to the other thing, talking about the, uh, I said in the social situation, uh, they said, w you know, would, you, would you would you call me this? And they said, sure. Um, uh, I have a friend. I haven't spoken to this person. I, I don't know if I can, can still call this person my friend just because I haven't spoken to to this person in probably two or three years, but there was a time when this person was my friend and this isn't what ended our friendship. We just randomly stopped talking and that was the end of it. You know, <laughs> because this is what happens to adults. <laughs> yeah. Like that, 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 that's how most of my friendships end is we just, there's a day we stop talking to each other and then you know, what one day a conversation <laughs> ends and then another one doesn't get picked back up and there it goes. <laughs> Yeah, pretty uh, and, much. And that, that's that's what happened here. So this conversation isn't what ended the friendship. But um, uh, uh, it was a dude, and he was going by the name Alicia. And so at every turn, um, uh, they said, hey, have you seen Alicia? And I would say something like, yeah, I talked to Alicia the other day, and this and this, and this happened. And this guy took me aside one time. He said, hey, why, you know why you always use my name is said, you know, is, is it because you just don't want to call me she? And I said, yes. So I'm not going to go out of, I'm not going to go out of my way to call you he and offend you. I'm not going to actively and purposefully offend you, but I can't do it. <laughs> I can't bring mm. myself to do it. <laughs> and he, mm. and that, that didn't, and he didn't get <laughs> mad about that. And I called him he just now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, but he is he's a dude. Um, uh, he, he he didn't get mad about that because, like you know, he knew that I wasn't. Tr I just I couldn't do it, but I wasn't trying. I was trying. I was actively trying not to offend him by calling him he. And right, I, and, right. and, the, and he understood that's the, that. That's the important thing. Yeah, yeah that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. He, um, <laughs> that, that, that's the important thing. Um, so there's there's someone I would like to call this person my friend. Um, mm -hmm. I like to think where it's more of a work acquaintance, someone that um, I that. I work at a place where I sell things and this person buys things from me. Ah. Um, and this is in a very uh, aggressively right-leaning conservative part of the world to the point where like I roll my eyes a lot. It's a bit much for me even. And I'm, uh, especially in today's world, I come, I, I definitely side more conservative uh, just because of how things have been painted so black and white. And if you want to stand on one or the other, I find myself having to lean away from my center. Mm -hmm. which is where I like to be, but people tend to paint it black and white. I'm getting, I'm diverging, sorry. Mm. Um, not diverging, the other one. Um, mm. But in this particular area of the world, <clears throat> I even find myself being like, okay, okay. Um, but there's this person, um, born female, mm -hmm. has gone, undergone, um, what's it called? What's she it has called a you... penis. <laughs> she, she has a penis. Does not have a penis, but G it had the, gender reassignment you know, where surgery. You, take, you know where they take the titties off. Yeah, Gen that would be gen <laughs> gender reassignment surgery. It's not. It's not gender reassignment surgery because it doesn't have any male anatomy other than we've cut off the boobs. That's pretty much all that's happened. Yeah, I'm well, just trying yeah, to remember the name of so, that surgery. Yeah, so that technical surgery is a mastectomy, but it's when but you're but when you're doing when you're doing it for that reason, it's still considered gender reassignment. Okay, I'm not going to say the person's name. Not that I think anyone's going to find this person, but. Mm -hmm. um, had a mastectomy, did not have any gender reassignment surgery, um, had, takes testosterone, is married to a woman. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, like wouldn't, that make, wouldn't that make her straight white male now? Yeah, that's, 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 that's <laughs> the thing. She's now the, she is now the most oppressed group in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, whenever uh, she, yeah, there it was, see what I mean? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone refers to this individual as she. Everyone around her does. 
Um, it's a very conservative part of the world. They refuse to do anything else, but they do it out of, I won't do it, and I'm blah, 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 and the loud, borderline, hateful all the time. Mm-hmm. I can't hang with that. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I think that's wrong. Just to be to be mean, just to be to be mean to be mean is one thing. That's too far. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one day I'm sitting with this person, and I was like, I gotta ask you, what is your opinion? Does this do, do you get offended by this and this? I get offended by people being purposely hateful. Um, but in this, because I'll say the full sentence, she said, I get. She goes, you can call me she. I get it. You're nice to me. You're helpful to me. I don't think you do anything mean to me. And I look like a girl because I was born a girl. I get that. <clears throat> she was and like, I even kept a female name. It's a very female name. I'm not going to say it, but that's this person's name goes by it. She's like, I don't really care what you say because of what you do. And that is the important thing. That's what it comes down to for me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like the word is so much less important because of the action. And that's where it really comes down to. You love the person no matter what. You don't do anything else because you're you're being loving, <clears throat> and they're going to understand. If I mean, not everyone's going to understand, mm-hmm. but I mean, in a meaningful, somewhat relationship, they're going to understand that you clearly show that you would do the right thing, and that's mm-hmm. the important thing. Again, back to the that's the back to the Jordan Peterson comment. <laughs> I have certain ideals and concepts that maybe I wouldn't falter for just because this person says, this is the thing that I want now. And I go screw yourself. Mm-hmm. But you wouldn't, again, you're not you, like what you said earlier. I'm not going out of my way to purposefully be rude. I'm not going to go out of my way to purposefully be mean. And there are situations where there's things that I just can't do. Cool. The important thing is that in your situation, you're talking about with that person, the situation I'm talking about with this person mm-hmm. at the end of the day, mm-hmm. that person understood that your actions were the right actions doing the right thing by this person and that anything else just stems from a concept or an idea th- that this person is separate from because mm-hmm. everything should be individual take that communist yeah so sp- speaking of not being like purposefully offensive uh, and th- doing all this stuff um uh, so as as absolutely hilarious as it was it um uh, he confirmed later when Ben Shapiro called uh, Zoe Turr Sir, yes. Um, uh, he confirmed later that was a complete accident. He said, "I'm just used to calling people sir and ma'am." There was a dude sitting next to me. I said, "Sir." Said it slipped out. I wasn't didn't even mean to say it. <laughs> it was a it was a mention, pure accident. If we're gonna talk about the situation, mm-hmm. who reacted more aggressively, Ben yeah. Shapiro or that person? Good lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that? You accidentally called me, sir. I'm gonna threaten you with violence. <laughs> Although. <laughs> Although the reaction to everything on there was just so funny, because it was like, like, oh, and what are your genetics, sir? It's like, you say something like that one more time, you're going home in an ambulance. Just Ben Shapiro, wow, that seems wildly inappropriate for a political discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the perfect answer. Oh, it was great. <clears throat> well, uh, <clears throat> well, that's a topic I don't want to dive deeper into because there's no point. In my opinion because yeah. the all-encompassing mm-hmm. answer for me is always going to be hey mm-hmm. this is the person we are even if we didn't just feel that we should because of our you know your the you know this is how we feel like we should be mm-hmm. i mean that's it, it's worth mentioning it's biblical to love people mm-hmm. um it just is and I, I don't love people out of obligation your makeup as an individual after trying to become christ-like leads you to mm-hmm inherently being loving you inherently love people you inherently want the best for people mm-hmm. but there's a people are having a problem with saying <clears throat> if you don't completely support me and don't completely side with me and don't completely have my back in everything that i say and do then you're not with me and that's nonsense yeah absolutely it's absolute nonsense it's yeah. beyond nonsense and the fact that this is the way that the world thinks it is right now does make you want to vomit sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we have a sister who has um, uh, who said she listens to this, um, uh, and we'll see if she uh, says something about if she does listen to this. We'll see because she'll say something about this to me uh, for having said this. But she used to be of an opinion, and I she may or may not still be of that opinion. Um, uh, she would get really, really mad because uh, she there were certain things that she liked, and I thought they were stupid. 
And she said, hey, look at this thing mm. that I like. And I said, hey, that thing's stupid. And she gets so mad. She said, why are you calling me stupid? I said, I'm not calling you stupid. You're, you you can like stupid things without being stupid. Insulting the things you like is not insulting you. And she made the statement, yes, it is. To call the things I like stupid means you're calling me stupid for liking them. No. <laughs> you're, you're a person who likes stupid things, not a stupid person who likes things. <laughs> Our mother's kind of that way too, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they take offense to that sort of thing, and I, I get it, but <clears throat> th- we're thinking of the same sister here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so without saying mm-hmm. um, without saying the sister's name, just because I'm not doing I'd try to do names on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are listening, sister, you're still the worst lesbian ever. <laughs> he, he, even worse than Kim Jong-sul. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the word, I, I'm I don't glad know he's how dead. Much more you can, yeah, true. <laughs> I don't know how much more you can fail as a lesbian by getting married and trying to be a mother. Ugh. Worst lesbian of all time. Married to a guy. <clears throat> Dang it. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Okay. Hey, we made it. We we made it to the end. Yeah, we better call it the end. Yeah, that's absolutely the end. Ugh. <clears throat> But Tyler, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh wow! Hold on. Whoa, that felt like a setup. Hold on, I wasn't ready for a setup. No. Okay. Uh, that, that's that. That's good. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs>